Good morning. So, we will quickly revise uh, what we have learned in the last lecture. Uh, we are looking at models for non ideal reactors. You know, non ideality comes because of the non ideal flow patterns, right. And uh, we have to somehow characterize this non ideality, ok. So, we are looking at one parameter models. Before this, in the earlier chapter, we looked at uh, zero parameter models so with two extreme situations, uh, maximum mixedness and complete segregation. Now, uh, in this particular chapter, we are looking at models with some parameters involved in it and these parameters have something to do with the flow patterns inside a reactor, the extent of mixing and so on. Okay. Uh, so, uh, we will we'll just uh, moving away from zero parameter models. The problem with zero parameter models, I told you that gives you bounds on conversion, does not tell you the exact conversion. Whereas, now we are looking at uh, a model with a parameter. So, it is going to give us some idea about a conversion, okay? uh, exact conversion if the model that we are using is right. Okay? So, uh, we are going for a simple model now, it is a one parameter model, you can have a model with many parameters, but right now we are just looking at one parameter model. The, the two types of models that we have looked at, the first is tank in series and the second one is dispersion. Okay. Of course, we have just looked at this one in detail and today we are going to talk about dispersion model. But just to quickly revise what is tank in series model, we have a tubular reactor, say tubular reactor and there is a flow that is taking place in this direction. Now, a plug flow reactor is a reactor where the mixing in radial direction is maximum, but there is no mixing in axial direction. Okay. Right, no mixing in axial direction, but then the velocity profile is flat. And if I have a pulse injected here, okay, or a tracer injected here, then I'll see the same tracer after a time tau here. Okay, that is the E curve and something that is known to you now. Okay, now if this pulse gets disturbed when it comes out, okay, then it may be because of some extent of back mixing. So if it comes out like this. Okay. There is a possibility that some back mixing is occurring here. Okay. It is not just a plug flow behavior, but it is hampered by some kind of back mixing. Okay. This may occur because of the concentration waves moving or this, there might be some disturbance in the flow internals, for example, say packed column, whatever. Okay. But I want to characterize this extent of back mixing. Okay. So, what I am going to look at is uh, this as a series of small small CSTRs okay? and there is n number of CSTRs right? and this n characterizes extent of axial mixing. Right? So, this n is a parameter, a given tubular reactor if I say that I have n number of CSTRs in series which are equivalent to this tubular reactor, then n becomes a parameter. This n can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and infinity. So, infinity means it is a plug flow reactor okay? and n is 1 means it is a CSTR because complete mixing and in between these two you have partial back mixing okay? and as n will n is large means there is less mixing, n is small means there is good amount of back mixing that is occurring. Okay. Then we derived equation for n in terms of, now how do we get a value of n? n is obviously obtained by the tracer experiments. So, tracer experiments is a tool for any given reactor under the conditions whatever flow rates and all we are operating it at. Okay. That tool gives you the parameter that is nothing but n. Okay. So, if I get E curve, the variance in the E curve Okay, tracer experiment, the E curve and the variance in the E curve, you know what is variance, okay, right. Sigma is equal to 0 to infinity T sigma square sorry, T minus tau square E T D T, right. So, variance. Now, this variance is related to n. What is the relationship? 
n is equal to we already looked at it tau divided by sigma square. Now, what is tau? Tau is a residence time total residence time volume of the tube divided by the volumetric flow rate volume of the tube ok do not do not do not talk about another do not confuse it with the volume of small small CSTRs ok. So, given a tube somebody asks me whether this will behave like a plug flow reactor or not tell me ok this is a flow rate that I am operating at what will I do I will do a tracer experiment I will see whether I get a nice pulse ok just getting repeated or very close to something that I had injected after time tau if it is not happening it is not a plug flow reactor ok. If it is getting dispersed as I showed, showed before like it is a it is a slightly dispersed or the pulse uh, get distributed rather over a time in that case there is definitely some back mixing occurring and there is a way to characterize this back mixing ok. I will do a tracer experiment I will get E curve from E curve I will get a variance ok variance because in this just E curve is to be known otherwise everything else is known. So, I get E variance once the variance in variance is known tau is nothing but volume divided by volumetric flow rate I get a value of n n is number of CSTRs. Now, once you have a value of m you have x that is conversion for series of CSTRs given by tau i k square sorry not square is raised to n. Now, tau i is nothing but tau divided by m right and k is the rate constant this is for the first order reaction do not forget this ok. And for second order again I can derive some equation if not I will just go on doing calculations step after step ok. So, it has allowed me to get the conversion for the given value of n sorry sorry should be ok. So, this is a conversion for a tubular reactor that corresponds to n CSTRs in series right. Now, one thing I forgot to tell you last time is this n. Now, after doing this exercise and getting the value of n, n need not be an integer ok, n can be 3.5, it can be 4.75 ok. So, this value of n now as such like really number of CSTR number means what it should be integer, but just ignore or others forget it ok, whatever value of n comes just put it here ok. And once you do that whatever value of x comes that is the real value of x which is close to what you would get in that real reactor which is a tubular reactor neither PFR nor CSTR. It must be noted that this is possible that is using the non integer value of n only for the first order reaction. For other orders analytical expression is not available for the conversion after n reactors. In such cases n will have to be rounded off to the next highest integer ok fine. We will we'll solve some example or I will tell you the methodology to solve the example ok as we go ahead ok, but before that let us look at a dispersion model. So, this is where I stop as far as the tank in series model is concerned ok. You know ok n is a parameter n is to be obtained once you get n you get a value of conversion for a given reaction ok for a tubular reactor. Now, let us go ahead and uh, discuss uh, the, the other model that is uh, dispersion model ok. Now, once we have one model why do you have another model this is our convenience sometimes uh, some models work well sometimes they do not work. So, I probably after discussing dispersion model we will have we will spend some time uh, relating these two models as well. So, there are two models available just uh, we should know both of them ok. So, that because they are both of them are popular in industry. Now, dispersion model in this case dispersion is what dispersion is again a synonym for axial mixing that is occurring ok. Of course, it can be in radial direction also. So, it is just dispersion okay. it can be in any direction, but as far as tubular reactor is concerned we are talking about axial mixing ok, but it can be radial also we can club these two together and get overall dispersion all right fine. Now, again you have a tubular reactor if you if you inject a tracer because of back mixing it is going to get something like this ok. If it spreads it becomes flat 
in that case extent of back mixing is 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 very large ok right. This is a behavior that I am going to see. Now, can we give a mathematical treatment to this ok. The first model that we looked at was assumption that ok you have series of CSTR tanks in series ok, but here I am not going to do that. I am just going to look at the way I do it for a plug flow reactor take a differential balance ok, take a differential balance. Now, for unsteady state suppose I inject a tracer how it behaves with respect to time I have to write unsteady state balance a PFR is a DFA by dV is equal to R is a steady state balance right. Now, I have a tracer injected R term that is reaction term is 0 there is no reaction taking place and non reactive conditions ok. So, you have flow taking place, but at the same time tracer concentration at any given point is going to change with respect to time ok. So, accordingly I will have an equation ok. So, what is the equation unsteady state equation for a PFR? So, it is going to be d f t f t is the flow rate of the tracer ok. Normally, we say f a no for a that is a reactor now instead of a now I have t here. So, d f t by d z is equal to a c into d c t by d t. So, this is unsteady state balance for a tracer in the tubular reactor. right tubular reactor. Why I am writing this balance? I am giving a mathematical treatment to this ok. As time proceeds how the things are going to change with respect to z and time as well ok. So, this equation describes everything. Now, what is f t? What is f t? In a normal situation f t now this is very important huh? for a plug flow reactor what is f t? we say that it is only convection that is V into C that is volumetric flow rate into concentration that is for a normal reactor. But in this case it is the, the flow is not taking place only because of convection, but there is an additional term which is caused by axial mixing which is caused by dispersion ok. So, this F T this let us try and write expression for this F t. This F t is of course, u into a c into c t what is this? This is convection right, but it is not just this apart from this there is an additional term that is coming out of dispersion ok. So, let me call this as F t d and what is F t d? This F t d is because of dispersion. Now, normally it is written as some coefficient we will talk about this later d a into a c look at look at how it look at the expression it is quite similar to Fick's law. This is quite similar to Fick's law d a a c into del c t by del z right. So, without a c it is flux. So, I am multiplying it by a c what is a c? a c is a cross sectional area right. So, this is the expression for the dispersion or flux due to dispersion and why it happens? It happens because of concentration gradient it is a front that is moving of the tracer ok it is a front that is moving. So, it is a concentration difference that causes the dispersion. This is analogous to diffusion and this expression is analogous to Fick's law. I am not calling this as a Fick's law because uh, the coefficient that I am using here that is d a is not a regular diffusivity or is not a normal diffusivity not a bulk diffusivity that we define in the case of Fick's law. This is something that combines all the effects ok. Now, you may ask me whether it, it has the capability to combine all the effects it may not have in that case your one parameter model does not work that is it ok. But if for some reasons of somehow if for a given geometry and flow pattern if it is able to take care of all these dispersion effects in one parameter then you are done ok. That means, your, your model is perfect go ahead and use it and try and predict the conversion of the reactor ok for a given volume ok. So, that is the meaning of it. So, I am I am expressing dispersion by this particular term. Now, you, you may ask me what kind of flow pattern laminar or turbulent 
Now, it, it can be proved that this expression works well even for laminar flows. This works well for turbulent as well. So, this can be eddy diffusivity in the case of turbulent flow or it can be in the, in the case of laminar it can be molecules jumping from one layer to another layer which are otherwise not mixing. Okay. So, one layer moves at one velocity the other layer moves at another velocity in laminar flow and there is exchange of some molecules this is non ideality. So, it is not exactly laminar, okay. but then in that case this particular exchange can be incorporated here in this term diffusivity. If time permits, we will try and derive the expression separately for laminar flow and show that it can be expressed in this way. Okay, but right now, let us go ahead. Okay, let us not worry much about whether it is laminar or turbulent flow. We say that this is applicable to any of flow that is laminar or turbulent. Okay. So, let us put this term here F t is equal to u a c c t minus d a a c d c t by d z. Okay. Now, we have we already have this equation, we have this equation and in this equation f t is given by this. So, let us substitute for f t here, okay, right? substitute for f t here. Remember f t otherwise was this only okay, for a plug flow reactor. Now, that we are considering dispersion, we have an additional term. Okay. So, we are going to put this here. So, if you substitute for F t, what you get is this d a del c t by del z square. Now, you get a second order partial differential equation del u c t divided by del z is equal to del c t divided by del t, right? second order. It is obvious because F t comes in like you have d F t by d z no and F t is now d C T by d z like you have d C T by d z term in F t right. So, that is why you have this expression. Okay. So, this is the expression that I am going to deal with right and with this equation now I, I have the tracer concentration changing with respect to time and z. If I solve this equation okay, I will get the response in, in sense rather this tracer how it spreads and all that okay, at any given time and length in the reactor. Okay. Fine. So, let us let us remember this equation and in order to solve this particular equation I need boundary conditions. right? I need boundary conditions. Now, these boundary conditions they are quite peculiar okay, and we are going to spend some time in knowing what these boundary conditions are. Okay. Now, you have a tubular reactor, you have the inlet and you have the outlet. Now, we are talking about B C s that is boundary conditions. Okay. Differential equation needs boundary conditions otherwise you cannot solve this equation. Now, how do I look at it? You will say it is not that difficult what is the big deal this is inlet concentration outlet concentration and all that. So, you see this is your second order uh, partial differential equation. How many boundary conditions you need? Here you need one initial condition and two, two boundary conditions. right? So, uh, there are some assumptions to be made here okay? and uh, some of the assumptions they work so well. right? So, you have a flow taking place, you have a flow taking place, dispersion is happening. Now, where is the dispersion happening? Dispersion is happening here that means, d a value of d a is greater than 0 in the reactor. So, this is a this is a reactor, this is a reactor. Okay. So, value of d a in this domain is greater than 0. Now, this is before the inlet and this is after the outlet. Okay. So, before the inlet now I have a choice whether dispersion is happening here as well or not. So, let me let me let me consider a situation where d a is equal to 0 here and d a is equal to 0 here. The no dispersion is happening in the outgoing channel and incoming channel. It all depends what kind of system you have, what kind of nozzle you have okay, here, here and here. But if I assume this, then this is called as closed, closed vessel. And we have a corresponding boundary condition, we will we'll come to that. 
but this is a situation where I have a closed closed vessel that means there is no dispersion here and there is no dispersion here. Okay. There is another extreme, there is another extreme where I have open open case or open open vessel where d a is greater than 0 here as well, d a is greater than 0 here as well, d a is greater than 0 here as well. Okay. Right? Why not? <laughs> Sometimes you know, like we show the arrow like this and not straight. Why? This is one indication where the flow is not ideal. Okay, it's not like a plug flow. Here. <laughs> so it all it all depends how we want to show it. But then the indication is like the arrow is distorted means there's some back mixing happening. All right, fine. So this is called as closed closed. Now you may have situation where you have open closed or closed open depending on what is happening in so you have a choice and depending on that you decide okay what kind of boundary condition is applicable in my particular case okay because every time we have a different expression okay so let us look at sorry did i say oh sorry this is not closed closed let me let me correct myself sorry okay this is not closed closed this is open open earlier was closed closed all right this is open open. Okay, so, you may have several possibilities and you decide what you want. Okay, it can be close close, it can be open open, it can be close open or it can be open close. Okay, all possibilities. So, depending on that you will get expression for the boundary condition. So, let us write expression for a close close vessel. Okay. So, let me draw it again. At inlet, you have flow taking place. So, whatever coming in is going out at this particular boundary, right. So, I have expression F t tracer 0 minus, see here it is 0 minus and sorry minus and is 0 plus, okay. F t 0 minus at any given time is equal to f t 0 plus at any given time at that particular time of course. Okay, these two times are same. Right. So, that is obvious no that is obvious there is no accumulation at the inlet. Okay. So, whatever comes in goes out. So, molar flow rate f t of tracer coming in is equal to coming in at the inlet is equal to coming inside a reactor. Okay. Fine. So, let us write expression for F t. Now, F t in there is no dispersion here close to close. So, there is no dispersion here. So, it is velocity into cross sectional area into concentration 0 minus t right concentration at inlet that is 0 minus at particular time. Okay. I am multiplying it by u into a c. What should I write here now? What should I write here? For this, for this, can I just write this u that is velocity a c c t 0 plus t. Is that sufficient? The answer is no, this is not sufficient because inside it is not just the convection or the velocity driven flow, but it is dispersion as well. So, you will have an additional term which is given by a c into d a right d c t by d z at z is equal to 0 plus right. So, f t coming in from here is this and f t here is this plus this. Right. So, these two concentrations are different, these two concentrations are different, concentration here is different from concentration here. Why? Because this is an additional term which will make sure that his concentration changes. If this term was not there, if this term was not there, then u a c will get cancelled and these two concentrations would be equal, but this term is responsible for making these two concentrations different. All right. 
Okay, so let us let us simplify this further C t 0 is equal to minus d a divided by u d c t by d z at z is equal to 0 plus plus c t 0 plus t. So, this is one boundary condition okay, that is at inlet. So, inlet boundary condition I will say inlet p c b c at the exit or outlet what happens at the outlet. So, let me get back to this figure or let me draw it here again. So, d a is greater than 0, d a is equal to 0 here. There is a continuous flow, there is a continuous flow. So, at z is equal to l, at z is equal to l, c t at l minus is equal to c t at l plus. The concentration here is same as concentration here. Okay. Concentration these two points are going to be same. Okay. So, what it means is d c t by d z is equal to 0. So, this is the boundary condition at the outlet. So, these are the two boundary conditions that I have. All right. So, these two boundary con conditions and where is our equation? Is the equation here. So, this is the equation. This equation and these two boundary conditions, what else do I need? I need initial condition. What is that initial condition? At time is equal to 0, what is the value of concentration at all lengths? Okay. So, at time is equal to 0, initial condition I C. Okay. Initial condition at time is equal to 0 and z is greater than 0, and that means at any length C t 0 plus 0, that means time 0 is equal to 0. Of course, it can be at any any length, 0 plus means onward. Okay. 0 uh, initially the concentration is 0 because I am injecting a tracer okay, at time 0. Okay. So, at time 0 inside a reactor the concentration is 0. So, this is initial condition. So, initial condition then you have boundary conditions. So, these are the boundary conditions and this is your equation, this is your equation main differential equation. I, I can solve these equations together to get the tracer concentration, how it changes inside a reactor. Why are we doing all this? Because we want to see how the tracer get tracer spreads. Okay. Why, why do we want to know how the tracer spreads? Because that is going to tell me the flow pattern inside a reactor. So, I am able, I will be able to characterize the flow pattern like what I did in the case of tanks in series. I, I characterize the flow pattern in terms of a number called number of tanks n. Similarly, I am going to get a parameter here. Okay, we will see what parameter right? that will characterize the flow pattern. So, let us solve this equation and we will see. Okay. Right now, see the main difference in what we did before and after, before means in the tanks and series model. There, we just discretized it, okay, the entire domain, the volume in different tanks. Now, I am looking at differential equations. So, there is a discrete dynamics there, here it is a continuous dynamics. I am writing a differential equation here, there I was writing difference equations. See. The difference you have come across this particular way of formulating a problem in many cases, the distillation column, absorption column, see number of stages, packed column, tray column, similar. Okay. Fine. So, now let us go ahead. Before that, we need to non dimensionalize this equation because when we non dimensionalize, we will come, come, come up with a parameter okay, that is going to decide everything. Okay. Now, what is this 
non dimensional uh, form of the equation the non dimensional form of the equation is going to be like this so let's let's start with this equation sorry so let me yeah this is a differential equation i want to non dimensionalize this so let me define non dimensional concentration psi ct is by ct0 lambda z by l theta in fact theta we will come back to this okay it will come on its own okay you know typically what happens when we do non dimensionalization okay if we do this so let's see you have da d2 psi by d lambda square okay now here what you'll see is you have l square minus u you can take it out assuming that velocity is not changing with respect to z and t right So, this is the of course, it is not a non dimensional, I am not de dimensionalized the time yet. Now, if I define theta equal to T u by L, T u by L, or in other words, suppose I multiply this equation by L by u, by L by u. So, let us multiply both the sides by L by u then what do I get d a divided by u l I am multiplying it by l by u okay, l by u. So, u l this will go away l by u means what? when it comes in the denominator you have this happening okay right so l by you multiply it by l by u comes in the denominator 1 upon u by l and i take this here t into u by l okay so i get d theta del theta so this is a dimensionless equation I have got right. If it is not clear, you can do it on your own and check. Okay. So, dimensionless concentration, dimensionless length, dimensionless time. What is the unit of this? Second, meters per second and meter. Okay. So, no unit. U by L has a unit per second. Okay. So, that is why I am using U by L as a parameter here or other. I have clubbed this two to get dimensionless time. And d a by u l, what is the unit of d a? Meter square per second. This is meters per second and this is meter. So, this is again dimensionless number. Okay. Rest all are dimensionless quantities. So, this is a dimensionless number. So, let us spend some time on this particular number d a by u l. d a by u l this is a dispersion coefficient velocity and length this is a very famous number which this is this is number that characterizes the mixing okay right it is named after an engineer called peclet okay but of course the peclet number is inverse of this that means u l by d a. So, Peclet number is u l by d a or in other words 1 upon p is equal to d a by u l. Okay. Peclet number that t is silent. So, say Peclet, Peclet number. Okay. The very famous number so, let me put that number in the equation again. You remember that equation? Yeah. So, here 
right. So, d a by u l is 1 divided by p 1 by p right. So, this is my equation. So, this Peckle number before we go ahead try and understand the meaning of it. If Peckle number is very large, if Peckle number is very large that means the dispersion is small, velocity is very large. What does it mean? It means I am going towards what kind of flow? Plug flow, okay? because dispersion is less, velocity is very large no dispersion or a very small dispersion, Peckle number is very large. If it is infinity, then it is plug flow reactor. In other words, if, if dispersion coefficient is very large, okay, if dispersion coefficient is very large, then Peckle number will become very small. And what is the meaning of large dispersion? That means, there is so much back mixing happening. And what is that situation? It is nothing but a back mix reactor, a CSTR when Peckle number is 0. So, two bounds see it is quite similar to number of CSTRs in series, number of tanks in series. So, this is a differential equation or continuous dynamics, there it was discrete dynamics. Okay. Theoretically, the both are falling in line okay, or like they are similar. Okay. So, Peckle number can be defined in words as Peckle number is equal to rate of transport by convection. See those two terms u l in the or u in the numerator u, u is convection is a velocity right divided by rate of transport by dispersion, because in the denominator you have d a, here you have u right. And of course, L that is characteristic length comes because of like you have to somehow d a means not t is meter square per second. No? So, that d a by delta has to come. So, uh, you have that L coming in the expression for Peckle number, but otherwise remember this u will come in the numerator and d a in the denominator and Peckle number will characterize the back mixing. Okay. Larger the Peckle number, smaller is the back mixing and smaller the Peckle number, larger back mixing. Peckle number infinity means plug flow, Peckle number 0 means CSTR. So, so these were the boundary conditions I had. If I non-dimensionalize them, okay. so the first one looks like this. The first one, if I non-dimensionalize this, it becomes 1 by P e into del psi by del lambda plus psi is equal to 1. You can derive it. Okay. If I non-dimensionalize this, this, this is the expression that I get, because this, this is I am just dividing both the sides by this number, this number C t 0 sorry C t 0 I am dividing. So, C t 0 by C t 0 1 and then I get this. Okay. So, this is the non dimensional form of the boundary condition 1, then the boundary condition 2, this is the boundary condition 2, this was this was boundary condition 1, this is the boundary condition 2, right. Now, I get it is quite simple d c t by del, del c t by del z is equal to 0 means del psi by del lambda is equal to 0. Okay. Fine. So, these two boundary conditions and of course, I will have the initial condition which says that concentration is 0 everywhere at time is equal to 0. Okay. So, psi is equal to 0, okay. psi is equal to 0, let me write it, okay. psi is equal to 0 at all lambdas when theta, what is theta? Time is equal to 0. I am, I am working in terms of dimensionless numbers. Huh? All right. So, with this now I have equation to be solved one equation ordinary sorry partial differential equation second order with three boundary conditions 
of course, two boundary conditions and one initial condition okay, in dimensionless form. Uh, what I will get is the plot of plot of con tracer concentration say psi versus theta right. Okay. How will I so what is the tracer concentration at the outlet huh? tracer concentration at the outlet exit concentration because I am not looking at what happens inside of course, it is going to be in between what you get at the outlet and what you get in the what, what you injected at the inlet. Okay. But normally you see I, what do I realize I realize outlet concentration because I do pulse experiment or I do tracer injection experiment. Okay. So, this is the outlet concentration when I solve this equation when I solve this equation at z is equal to l or at lambda is equal to 1 what is the concentration. Okay. So, this is what I am going to see right. So, so, what kind of profile will I see here? So, it all depends on the Peclet number. Okay. If Peclet number is very, very large, if Peclet number is very, very large means dispersion is 0 right? or say Peclet number is infinite dispersion is 0, what is the tracer concentration that I am going to see? It is exactly similar to what I have injected. I am going to see a plug flow behavior. So, what is that? right this is what i am going to see this is what is this this is theta equal to is a dimensionless time theta equal to 1 why dimensionless time okay it is t into u by l u by l or l by u is tau that is residence time. Okay. So, this time is tau this time is tau actual time. So, actual time divided by tau that is theta is equal to 1. right? So, this is when Peclet number is infinite okay. or sometimes people have like they talk in terms of d by u l. So, d by u l will be 0 or this corresponds to d by u l equal to 0. Okay, another extreme Peclet number 0 famous E curve for I am not plotting E curve I am plotting concentration, but it is ok. The qualitative behavior is say similar to the E curve. And then in between these two see now this plot has to become this means the transition is like this. Right? Sorry this will move this peak will normally increase or like the height of so because it is going to go up right. So, this is a typical behavior that I will see as the value of Peclet number increases. So, here Peclet number is 0, here the Peclet number is probably say some value 5, Peclet number what 100 and so on. So, this is a typical behavior and this is quite similar to what we have seen before okay before means what for a tank in series model in tanks in series model we looked at how this profile or how this e curve or the tracer concentration changes with respect to time sorry yeah with respect to time or e curve how does it look like with respect to n rather sorry number of tanks in series so it goes from CSTR to PFR similar thing is happening here. That means, n in tangent series model is equivalent to Peclet number in the case of dispersion model. Right? Both are similar, both are similar. Right? So, once you have the E curve, now it is other way around, once you have the E curve, you can calculate a Peclet number. Okay. 
I have drawn this for several values of Peclet number, but if you do laboratory experiment for tracer injection, get some E curve, I can calculate a corresponding Peclet number from this, right? And Peclet number will characterize the extent of mixing like the number of tanks in series in the previous model. So, as simple as that. So, do a tracer experiment, get E curve or concentration versus time for the tracer, determine the value of Peclet number. What next then? If you have value of Peclet number, then you have to calculate a conversion when the actual reaction is taking place. So far, we just looked at a tracer experiment without any reaction, we have characterized the flow patterns in terms of extent of back mixing and that is through the value of Peclet number. Once you get a Peclet number, we have we go for the reaction model. Okay? We go for the reaction model. Now, how to get a value of Peclet number? So, so, one can derive of course, one can solve this equation, we have to solve this equation numerically by the way, it is a differential equation. Okay? So, I have, I have not given you analytical expression for this, but you have to solve this equation numerically or analytical expression is also possible. So, it comes in the form of a series, okay? mathematical series, but then uh, that is not important. See, uh, the expression is not important. How it looks like, what is its qualitative behavior is important. right? And once I have the expression or I have the I have the profile or E curve rather, how to get a value of Peclet number. So, one can get an approximate value of Peclet number okay, from this. Okay. Now, once I have the E curve right, from this E curve or concentration tracer concentration versus time curve, right, I know that sigma square that is variance divided by mean residence time which is nothing but tau okay that is uh, our residence time in this particular volume divided by volumetric flow rate right tau square infinite 0 to infinite t minus tau square et dt right should be noted that T m is equal to tau is valid only for closed closed system. This is, this is something that, that I know, this is the definition of sigma variance. Now, from this differential equation, okay, I can derive the expression for sigma in terms of P e like what I did before in terms of number of tanks in series sigma square was equal to sigma square was equal to tau by n or a tau sorry uh, yeah tau square by n square right so here again i am going to get an expression for sigma in terms of peclet number so that expression happens to be sigma square tau m this is nothing but tau is equal to 2 by P e minus 2 by P e square 1 minus e raise to minus P e. Okay. Slightly complicated, no need to remember this equation, but then you know there is a relationship between sigma P e and T m or other tau. Okay. And we had a similar relationship before as well between sigma tau and n, there was n here that was relatively simpler. Now, this is slightly complicated, but of course, no need to worry about it. The earlier relationship was sigma square is equal to tau square divided by n, sorry. Yeah. Now, instead of this relationship, I have this relationship. Here, I had n as a parameter. Now, I have P e as a parameter. That is the only difference. So, once I get sigma square from my E curve, that is mean variance, I get sigma square from mean variance, I can get a value of P e that is Peclet number. And once you have a Peclet number, you have characterized the flow pattern, then the next job is to get a conversion for the reaction of interest. Okay. So, far no reaction similar to what we did once you get a value of n 
Then for a first order reaction, I say that x is equal to 1 minus 1 by 1 plus tau i k raised to m. Remember? So, this is what I did after getting the value of n. Now, my next job here is after getting the value of p e, I need to get a conversion okay, in terms of p e. So, that is what we'll, we are going to see in the next lecture, how to get conversion from p e. All right. Thank you very much.